Uh, welcome to this month's show. Um, something a little bit different again. We've come up to Hull to uh, Game Boy, um, here with Paul James, and we've come up to see how a cartridge is made from start to finish. That's from smolting the lead through to making the shot, making the cartridge, to actually putting the cartridge in the gun and pulling the trigger. It should be an interesting journey, and I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so basically we've come to the top of the shot tower here. We're quite a long way up. Um, could you just explain a little bit about the process of how everything works from here at the start of the process of, of making shots? No problem at all. As you can see, we're on the hoist, which brings the lead up the building. We're 140 feet high. From here, we bring a, a ton of lead at a time. Goes into the, the top of the shot tower. And then we're looking at uh, taking the, ta the shot, or the, the ingot, into the furnace. Then we've got a very simple process where it's actually smelted at 480 degrees. We're forming it into a, well, a pan yeah. and it's dropping down the tower as it, as it cools, fall into a vat at the bottom and then we go through the grading system to make what is you know, the best quality shot in the world, as, as you know. Yeah. And, and the reality is that, you know, we can talk about components and everything else, the, the, the sphericalness of the shot, the quality of the shot, the grading of the shot, without question, and always has been all my life, yeah. makes a cartridge. Because at the end of the, the, the downrange performance of the cartridge yeah, is true. all shot based. Well, what you've got to look at is what kills the target. Yeah. For you, do you know, we all talk about you know, the aesthetics of a product, you know, high brass, nice printing. The only thing in between yourself and your gun and the target is the shot. Yeah. So it's for me, it's the most important shot, you know, process of the cartridge. And uh, the only, well, we manufacture for ourselves solely and exclusively. That's why you open any game ball cartridge up from the, the, the entry level to the top of the range. It's better quality than the top of the range of our competitors. Yeah, yeah. there's no question about it. It has helped me over the course of the last, I've been, I've been a... Uh, it's uh, 32 uh, uh, years, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is, yeah, and it's, and, and I've been, 32 years loyal, but mm. you're only loyal if the product is as good a quality as you could ever ever mm. wish to get. At your level, everybody would sponsor you, so you can pick and choose who you want to be associated with. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the main difference. When you see the processes in place, why would you buy anything else? Well, thing is, our philosophy is all about quality. Yeah. We don't cut corners. Yeah. And, it, and it shows, mm. and you will all see that. These, uh, well, you can describe them in industrial frying pans. And what we do is we, uh, we use a micro drill pit to drill the holes in the pan, which each, well, you can see 0 0.9, 0 0.85, 0 0.8. They will equate to a different size of shot, which we'll, uh, we'll explain further over there yeah. in a moment. And then we tap the, uh, the molten lead out into the pan. Yeah. As it goes on the tower, it forms into, well, your lead ball, yeah. your shot. So. How long does one of these last? Did you, did you mention something about that they have to be redrilled every day? We redrill the pans every day, but the actual pan itself does last quite a long time. You can see these, uh, they're relatively aged just by looking at the handles. Uh, yeah. They're old pans. It's just after every shift, we have to redrill the holes. To guarantee to, that to, quality. To guarantee the, the actual hole diameter yeah. or circumference, just to make sure that every piece of shot is falling true to size. As you can see here, George, this is the waste. You probably so seen it's all some misshapen, flat stuff. It, you've got different sizes in there. You've got some flats. You've got some some shot with tails on. You can see a couple of pellets stuck together there. Yeah. But you probably cut shells open in the past, not game ball, and found similar looking shots to this. Yeah, absolutely. So, there's no waste here. This is it's not good enough quality to go in a shell. But it'll go back to, the top of, back to the top of the tower and straight through the system again yeah. until it's 100%. Yeah. Okay, so we've, we've gone from the top. We've seen how the shot comes from the ingot form, gets smelted, 
comes straight down through and it's produced through the grading machine. It comes into here into these vats and then it's gravity fed from these vats down into the loading machines. Correct. Now we've got, I see we've got two types of shot here. We've got standard shot and diamond shot. Yeah. If I put my hand in the standard shot. And get the diamond. And you can see the colour of that. Oh, you look. And you look at the diamond shot and you can see the difference. So anybody that's looking at standard lead or diamond shot can now see the difference. There's no comparison. And this is all gravity fed straight down into the machines. Well, if you can look, that's going on to bay number four. So that's machine yeah. number four downstairs and machine number five next door. And then as you, as you walk around the factory, you'll see the different numbers. Yeah. And then everything's gravity fed all day. When that's running low, the next one will be put on top. Yeah. Until we're ready to change machines over. Yeah. So this is standard lead, that's diamond shot. What's the difference? Uh, well, I, I'd say, uh, well... The main difference is that uh, it's, it's gone through production five times through grading and then it's polished. So I'd say that the, the standard lead shot is still probably the best quality lead shot in the world, but diamond shot is better. It's been graded uh, five times rather than three and then polished. So every pellet is true to size and that's what's giving you the optimum patterns and uh, you know, keeping, keeping the tightness of pattern at range. Because to keep a good pattern at range, all the balls must be spherical, they, need to be the, they must the, all be consistent to prevent fires. Same flyers, size, same et cetera, weight, et same, you know, it's, well, need to be spherical, yes. So if you're looking for that edge, there's your answer. With not just here, but with Kent early on, mm. um, he's, as you said earlier, on 32 years mm. old. And um, let's only hope there's another 32 years left in it. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, and you know we keep going forward together as a as a as a family that we have done up until now, and I appreciate it. Definitely. Good to see you. Thank you, George. Let's just recap completely. We come from the where the shots initially smelted. Yep. Down through to where the shot falls into the into the into the pot. It then comes through, goes through its grading process. We've gone into the manufacturing area up the top where it goes into its containers and then it's gravity fed down into this area now where the actual final cartridge this is, is made. This is the main production area. So you've been, like you just said, on the top of the shot tower, level five, and we've gone straight to the bottom. Yeah. And we've actually gone up to level one for the UK warehouse where the finished shot is gathered and fed, like you said, by gravity, yeah, yeah. down to the machines here in the background. Yeah. This is the main production floor. We've got 16 machines in operation. Some stuff that's making 10,000 a day, down to the big stuff that's making 14,000 an hour. So there's a there's a huge variation of machinery. Yeah, yeah. And that's that's just down to some loads are very specialist. If you're going to make 10 gauge, 410, they can't be made on high speed machinery. Yeah. yeah. So we've got and, everything here. And obviously, and obviously, when you're when you're doing this, uh, the, the the machines are set for each specific order or each specific run. Yep. What, what would be a normal run that you would, uh, you would like to do here? I'd say a good run is 150,000, which yeah, yeah. needs to be on a mainstream product. If we're talking white gold, we'd probably run 100,000, 7,500, 8,000, yeah. uh, But then you've got, we do a lot of bespoke orders, as you know, with company yeah, yeah. brands on. And that's, that's 10,000, but 10,000 is the minimum we would run of a variation of product. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine, we don't want to be putting a 10,000 order on a machine that runs 14,000 an hour. Yes. So that those sort of orders suit the slow machines that'll make 15,000 a day. Yeah, yeah. So every machine's got a purpose. There's some stuff that looks like, you know, an Austin Allegro in here, and there's some stuff that looks like a Ferrari. Absolutely. And the two, you've got two new machines that are producing. Yeah, they're the high, highest Italian made machines, EMGs, which I'm happy to show you. Highest speed linear production machines in the world. They'll do 250 from uh, you know start to finish in a minute, packed, ready to shoot, ready for the end consumer to take away. Fantastic. And and I noticed that you've got here in the background. I hope you've got some uh, paper cartridges that are actually being sprayed with varnish. Yeah, we've got a uh, paper paper on production here. Like I was telling you before, we don't dip our shells. Uh, in varnish because you do get a residual build-up on the crimp yeah. so you can have problems putting them in the chambers 
we spray so you get a very even job then you know for a fact that you're know, waterproof yeah and you're not going to have any problems say you're on the well on the grouse more using paper that tends to be where it's used in the you know the, the thick of the action you don't want to have problems loading Getting the gun God, you know, so yeah, the that's the reason for that very, Absolutely. very slow process but the quality is second to none so yet again right from the start where we started smelting right through to the end shit the whole product line is based on quality it is and look i probably sound like a robot saying quality 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 but that that is what we're all about yeah. yes we can make cheaper cheaper loads yes we can make loads a lot faster than what we do but it's not good for the brand no. well thank you very much We're now in the main part of the uh, storage warehouse. You've got a massive amount of cartridges stored here. I think there's um, 17 million at the moment. 17 million in storage at the moment. Mm. It might even take me more than a week to get through this lot. Mm. Um, although most people think that that's a normal <laughs> daily occurrence. Um, it, uh, it's an impressive site with all the different branding and, and the way the storage is done. Obviously, you have to do that. Um, but it, you know, do you feel as though, do you feel as though the product range is, is at its capacity, or are you going to thinking about? I see you've got another cartridge there. Do you think there's anything else that you can bring into the range? I, I think we're, you know, uh, we're fully catered for everything. But saying that, we are building a new warehouse at the moment, which is going to give us another, you know, 1,000 pallet spaces, which theoretically is going to give us 21 million rounds of extra storage. So. Never say never. No. But I, th I think it's we're more building the warehouse for customer service to make sure that everything's in stock. Yeah. It's uh, uh, look, you look around. There's that many different variations of products. It's it's very difficult to to keep them all in stock at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. So it's about improving customer service rather than bringing new brands into play. And you and talking of new brands into play, I see that with the down the line elite, it's only just come online. I yep. saw it on the website. Uh, starting last week. Correct, yes. Um, tell us about it. It's a very, yeah, it's a very smooth cartridge because, you know, with a, uh, it's all about muzzle flip, isn't it, with DTL. Um, I haven't shot much of it myself, but the shooters tell me that they, they want a cartridge. It's very smooth, very consistent, which that is. It's, it's very similar to white gold, but it, it hasn't got the speed and the downrange energy of white gold because you don't need it for DTL. Right. So it's, uh, you've got your 16mm brass, like your white gold, you've got the same case with the CX2000 primer. You've got your diamond shot, you've got your Vecton propellant. Uh, yeah, and you've got, you've got your fancy so packaging. it's a similar cartridge to a it's, white it's, gold. It's not a white gold, but it's as close as you're going to get. Yeah. And I, I would say for the, the level of cartridge, it's, well, the too, the too cheap, really. I know, I know shooters will never agree with me, but for the actual build costs, it's a very cheap shell. Yeah. Do you mind if I, um, can I take a box and try them? Take a slab, no problem. It, uh, it's just something that, you know, we're trying different things on the show yeah, and, yeah. and that sort of thing. So if I take a box of these, which I know, we know for a fact that they've only just been loaded. Um, if I take a box of these on the next month's show, we'll go out and shoot a few sporting targets with them. Give them a and go. Just give them a run. I, th and, I think and, it'll and be a very good shell for sporting shooters as well. It's, we've, we've had to call them DTL because some of the DTL shots will only use a product that's designed for the discipline. Yeah, yeah. But anyone who's recoil sensitive, you know, maybe, you know, had problems with the shoulders or, you know. Would it oh, suit a female shooter? Shoot a female shooter, definitely. So you're still going to get that, you know, performance and high, you know, high, uh, you know, to very high level quality, but not with the recoil. Yeah. yeah. And it also will suit people for shooting, you know, closer range birds. Yeah, yeah. perfect. Okay, so look, I've had a ch I've had a chance to walk around the factory. Uh, I've had an absolutely fascinating day. Um, we've had such a good day up here, actually, and uh, and my faith in the brand has been completely and utterly. I just found you a little surprise. We've just uh, rebranded the packaging of the Pigeon Extreme. Oh, fantastic. Oh, and they've become Champion's Choice now instead of Signature Range. So, we, yeah, it goes alongside the uh, white gold now. Fantastic. Oh, that's nice. That's a, that's a cartridge we designed, co-designed over a period of time and has now, has now taken off in the game shooting world. 
with absolute, you know, this really is a good shell. If you want I can to take a few away today, I can, uh, can draw you an invoice up, not a problem. Oh, perfect. Thanks know. very much. I was just saying that I've had a really, really good time today looking around the factory. Yep. We we normally we do a piece on the normally we do a piece on the on the show where I do some tuition as well as a factual yep. part of the thing. But I've had such a good day and it's been so informative um, that I think we're going to do the whole piece on on this today because I've really enjoyed it. And once again, thank you very much for allowing us to come. Thanks for giving us the insight that you've given us yep. into the into the company and the product. Um, for us, it's been very informative, very instructional, um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the day, and I hope Good. club members enjoy it as well.